Plodico et al. gives us the six steps in qualitative data analysis, preparing and organizing the data, reviewing and exploring the data, coding data into categories, constructing descriptions of people, places and activities, building themes and testing hypotheses, reporting and interpreting data. The first task of data analysis is to make sure that data are in a form that can be easily analyzed. Depending on the time and resources, aim for different levels of depth in preparing the data. If interviews are tape recorded, preparation involves transferring the information from the recorded interviews into a written form. Other types of data preparation might include developing or enlarging photographs, labeling videotapes with identifying information, and making backup copies of data to store in a separate location. The following are some common methods for organizing data. Site or location from which data are collected. This method is common in studies where multiple sites or locations are observed. Person or group studied. Data may be organized by the individual person or group, or data from persons or groups with similar characteristics or backgrounds might be grouped together. By chronological order, data might be organized into the time periods in which it was collected. The type of data, interview transcripts might be assembled together separate from field notes and journals, and by type of events or issue addressed. If interviews focused on different issues or observations of different events were made, the data pertaining to each issue or event might be grouped together. The second step is a lot like jumping off the high dive board at a swimming pool, that is into an enormous pile of data waiting for analysis. All you can do is jump in and begin to explore by reading and looking through the various types of data collected. The initial review does not involve a careful reading for detail. Instead, one reads and examines data to get an overall sense of what is in them and whether enough data have been collected. Begin to jot down words and phrases that capture important aspects of the data in this initial review. The real purpose is to immerse oneself in the data and gain a sense of their possibilities. Through the initial review, qualitative researchers seek to understand the scope of their data before they begin to divide them into more manageable chunks or organize through codes. For many qualitative researchers, it is hard to say when the initial review stops and the coding begins because one process leads naturally to the next. The third step is coding data into categories. By coding, it means the process of identifying different segments of the data that describe related phenomena and labeling these parts using broad category names. It is an inductive process of data analysis that involves examining many small pieces of information and abstracting a connection between them. The next table describes common code categories and examples of code names that qualitative researcher might use in the analysis of data. Coding looks technical, but when you look at it, it's actually similar to what we do when we analyze a text. We group the words and phrases according to their themes or contexts. New codes are added as you review the data. Most data sets use 30 to 40 codes initially. Complex studies might include more than this. The actual process of coding can be conducted by hand or by computer. When coding is done by hand, write the code in the margin of the data source and then organize the data into piles with the same codes, cutting up data sheets as needed. Once the data have been coded, write detailed descriptions of the people, places, and events in the study. The goal is to provide rich, in-depth descriptions called thick descriptions of the experiences, perspectives, and physical settings represented in the data. 
Descriptions in data analysis often involve expanding on one's field nodes and combining nodes and interviews with the same codes into more integrated descriptions of people, situations, and places. Writing good detailed descriptions of even the most ordinary aspects of everyday life is an essential part of qualitative research. As we should know, coding and description comprise the first two levels of qualitative data analysis. Deeper analysis in which explanation of the events and issues represented in the data occurs as the researcher continues the process of abstraction by identifying major and minor themes in the coded data. These themes are typically big ideas that combine several codes in a way that allows the researcher to examine the foreshadowed questions guiding the research. In other words, themes provide the organizing ideas that the researchers will use to explain what they have learned from the study. Like codes, themes are usually described using a few words or phrases, but they identify the major concepts or issues that the researcher will use to interpret and explain the data. The researcher then re-examines the data using the themes as organizational frameworks to see if they provide a deeper understanding of the data. The final step in qualitative data analysis is the actual writing of the research report, including the researcher's interpretations of what the data mean. Most qualitative research is reported in a narrative manner, which may be organized using any of several different formats summarized in the following. These formats include thematic, where the text is organized in terms of discussion of themes that arise from the data analysis. This is a flexible format that fits a wide range of topics and is probably the most common method of presenting qualitative reports. The natural history format, where the text structure parallels or recreates the process of exploration and discovery that occurred during fieldwork. This format conveys a strong sense of the people, the setting, and the interactions involved in the research, although it makes it difficult to do theme analysis. There is the alternative or performance-based format, where the text is presented using a performance-based format such as a story, a song, dramatic performance, or a highly personalized account called an autoethnography. This format is useful in capturing the intense emotionality of a setting or experience. The amalgamation format analyzes data from several people and creates descriptive portraits of the types of persons involved in the study. Each portrait is based on multiple persons so that it protects confidentiality of the information. Activities may also be amalgamated into a typical day or week. In theoretical format, the text is organized around a theory used throughout the report, which serves as the framework for reviewing literature and collecting data. Grounded theory approaches organize writing in terms of the creation of a new theory that explains the data or the modification of an existing theory based on the data. And finally, the traditional scientific format here, the text is presented in the traditional style of research report, including introduction, review of literature, method, etc. The choice of format may be determined both by the results of the data analysis and by the researcher's philosophical framework and purpose in conducting the research. Many researchers include visual diagrams or images to represent the complex array of events issues or themes that emerged from their data analysis. Reports of qualitative studies usually include extensive samples of quotes from participants. By using the participants' own words, researchers aim to build the reader's confidence that they are accurately representing the reality of the persons and situations studied. Interpreting qualitative data involves making sense of the lessons learned by looking for their larger meaning. Interpretation might involve relating the findings to previous published studies or to a theoretical framework. 
and interpretation of qualitative data may also involve personal reflections by the researcher.